Hey, welcome to another episode of 1v200. It's been a minute since I've done one of these, probably about almost a year, but I, but I decided to bring this series back and to get back into it. So I have my amazing guest, Mr. Moose Haas here. He He's going to be in the hot seat tonight. I'm the movie hero, Anderson. And yeah, we see how this works. It's just a one-on-one -on -one interview show uh, and where... I have a list of, of questions that I've built with some friends ever since high school. And, and whenever we think of something interesting, we can add to the list. We, we just throw it on there. And then whenever we have a, a chance to get to know somebody, just pull questions off of this list. And interesting. And, and uh, some of these may go a little rapid fire style. Some we might dive in a, a little deeper. So uh, it'd be fun. You can find other episodes. We did, we did one with, with, with my co-host Austin, and then I interviewed just about my whole entire family, all my siblings. I did my 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 parents. I, I did, and I did one of my my um, uncles too, who's my uncle David, who's appeared on a couple of episodes of, of tournament fights and tier ranker. So so yeah, so I got a list of some people lined up. Moose was was first on my list. One of the first people I really wanted to uh, get to know because he just seems like a really interesting guy. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, well, thank you. So I'm excited yeah, for coming this. in your, so you your intro. I thought we were going on uh, comedians in cars with coffee for a moment there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like basically like the the vibe, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I like it. But let's do it. Yeah. So how it's gonna work is 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 we're gonna go. For, we're going to just go for two hours and either we're going to hit the two hour mark first or we'll get to two, 200 questions. There's a couple of extra bonus questions we, we may get to. Sometimes we don't have time. We'll, we'll just kind of see how the time goes. So, yeah. But um, so uh, the first question on on the list, uh, what is your name as it appears on your birth certificate? So I know some people have different names that not everyone knows about, you know. Wow. Next is going to be date of birth, social security yep. <laughs> number. All yep, right. Exactly. We're getting into it. Um, yep. Mark Allen Haas. All right. Like every other white man in America, my middle name is Allen. Nice, nice. And and I may answer some of these questions also just to kind of compare answers a little bit as we, we go. We'll, sure. we'll kind of see how it plays out. But but yeah, sounds good. Uh, next uh, question. Do you have any other nicknames besides Moose? Is Moose your only nickname you go by, or do you have any others that your family has or friends or anything? Uh, my, <laughs> my dad does call me Chip. Uh, okay. Yeah, when I was a kid, uh, I cornered a chipmunk in our motorhome and then caught it with my hand and carried it outside. So growing up, my dad used to call me Chip. Nice. <laughs> yeah. My, my nicknames usually come from my – my dad too. Like I got Big J, or he says Big J Jacoby. It's like something from when I was a kid. He just uh -huh. came up with. And then uh, some people call me Jojo because that's what uh, my nieces and uh, nephews, uh, when they're little, they they weren't able to, to pronounce my name, so they just say Jojo, and it kind of stuck with me. So, <laughs> so yeah. And also Movie Hero. That's one that's just from the the channel itself, you know. So, <laughs> but um, all right. Let's see. Um. How many candles were on your last birthday cake? Meaning, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to well, say. <laughs> tell you this. I turned 40 in two months. All right. Nice, nice. <laughs> Not too far from me. I'm 37, so pretty close. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what's the what's the date that you regularly blow your candles out? So when's your birthday? Yeah, uh, February 7th. Hey, you nice, guys nice, are nice. going for my uh, my identity theft here right? yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah but if you get, get questions in, in, out of the way if we get into any kind of bank account information you can say pass you know yeah <laughs> right <laughs> but do you have any pets i do i have the world's greatest bulldog named darby oh nice nice <laughs> yeah i've had a lot of pets over the years dogs cats even a a, a turtle and uh a uh, hamster all that stuff but but they've since passed and i do not have any pets right now <laughs> but um let's see what it what is your 
your hair color is that your natural like what you have i know men don't really dye their hair that much but <laughs> uh blocked okay <laughs> yeah. sounds good <laughs> and then your and then your your um eye color what color are your eyes <laughs> Yeah, boy, this is like a TSA pre-check here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, um, right. <laughs> I we're, getting we're getting the formal ones out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I have blue eyes. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and do you have any uh, tattoos or piercings at all? Anyway? Uh, no piercings, but I do have tattoos, yes. Okay, do you, do you, do you mind sharing any of them, or do you? Uh, sure, they're all yeah. on my arms. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me... Uh, pull off the old yeah <laughs> Ghostbusters armor here um I know. <laughs> yeah so i've got we have the haas family shield where's my camera there we go oh nice uh um, pretty cool and then we have a celtic knot on the bicep and nice. we have a celtic cross on the tricep nice nice yeah i've always been a little nervous about about tattoos because they're so permanent i'm like like I kind of want to get one, but I'm like, uh, what if I, like, don't, don't want it there later on? I'm like, uh, <laughs> so, but, um, let's see. Um, where were you born? Where or when? Where? Uh, I was born in Orange County, California. Okay, so did you grow up there, or did you, did you, uh, uh where do you live? live for most of your childhood i guess i did grow up in orange county uh i grew up in boyna park which is where knott's berry farm is okay um <laughs> so yeah i was born orange uh in anaheim uh hence the reason why uh angels fan rams fan uh, and then uh nice. <laughs> shortly after i was born we moved to boyna park and i lived there for a while until i ended up moving out to uh the san dimas area Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, for me, I, I was born in Utah, Provo, and then I moved to, to well, I moved all around Utah, and then I moved to to Idaho. I've also lived in, in Seattle for about six years, the Seattle area. So mm. I'm a Seahawks fan because of that, because they're, they're the closest team to, to Idaho, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. I've got family up in Washington. Uh, oh, nice. Cousin Ryan, Cousin Ryan used to live in Seattle for the long for a while he lived in washington his family still lives oh, nice. there and he took a job in seattle so okay yeah, you two should swap seattle stories sometime oh yeah for sure it's a fun place to live it's beautiful up, up there very green stuff but it, but it, it it got a little pricey to live up there so i'm like oh, i'm gonna find somewhere a little less expensive <laughs> so um all right let's see so oh, you are married right I am married. Okay. Yes. Um, how long have you been married for? Um, let's see. We got married in 2014. Okay. So uh, almost 10 years, eight years. Nice, nice. That's that's pretty good. I mean, it lasts a little longer than mine. I was married for six years, so now I'm kind of just enjoying the single life now. So <laughs> I proposed <Yep. laughs> to my wife on my 30th birthday. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, she didn't expect it then, so I figured I'd uh, do it at that point. So yeah, right, right. It's been a great ten years. How did you propose? Was there anything special that you did or anything? Uh, kind of. Um, so my birthday being February, we had a big thirtieth birthday party that we were going to do. And uh, at that point in my life, we were doing something called the Haas Games every year for my birthday. We do this big like beer pong drinking games tournament. Oh, nice! Um, and uh, so we were gonna do the uh, my thirtieth Haas games, and uh, cousin Ryan was actually in town, and uh, I proposed the night like we had it planned out, and we said, uh, "Hey, you know, we'll uh, why don't we all go for a hike in the morning? A hike in February in San Dimas, where we're going hiking is freezing." <laughs> Uh, and so you would have known like that should have tipped her off like oh we're gonna go on a freezing cold hike but it didn't um, and so we we hiked to the top of glendora mountain uh which is in the angeles forest right uh mountains behind los angeles basically nice uh when we got to the top of the mountain uh i got down on my knee and pulled out the ring and she said oh no 
<laughs> and I went, oh, like I, she's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, she, I just caught her off guard, and that was her first. Reaction. <laughs> yeah. Then proposed to her, and then uh, little did she know that uh, cousin Ryan and the the gal he was seeing at the time had brought a bottle of champagne and had Ooh, uh, huh. "What a Wonderful World" by Louis Armstrong playing. And nice. Yeah, we had champagne on top of the mountain after. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I wanted my... to try to do like a Ron Burgundy, like propose to you on top of a mountain. Oh yeah, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah. My my ex wife had a similar reaction when I proposed to her. Kind of caught her off guard. She's like, we're kind of like, oh no, oh oh wait wait, oh, oh yes yes, of course of course I will. Yeah yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> so <laughs> when, when the nose slips out, it's like oh yeah oh, yeah. Nope, you're, like, you're like okay. <laughs> You're yeah, yeah. On the mountain. <laughs> yeah, right. But um, let's see. I guess uh, I got a, got a couple alcohol related questions. What's your favorite type of beer, and then hard alcohol? What, what what's your your um go to when you're when you're drinking? <sighs> okay, <laughs> settle in, folks. This will be a long one. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So, favorite type of beer. Um, at the moment, at least my like, I, I love craft beer. I, I mean, I gravitate towards craft beer quite a bit. Um, nice. <laughs> and uh, you, I mean, usually anywhere we go, we always try to find a brewery of some sort. So we've been to <laughs> breweries all over the United States. Um, <laughs> and uh, hell, even some internationally. Uh, <laughs> nice. And then we, um, the type of beer, like lately hazy IPAs have been my, my favorite. Uh, I know they get a bit of a bad rap, but damn it, they're so they're easy <laughs> to drink, and some of these are like seven or eight percent, so you don't need too many of them. Right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and then hard liquor. I mean, I am a whiskey man. Um, okay. I've been to the. Uh, I stayed on the Malt Whiskey Trail uh, in the Highlands of Scotland. Oh, nice. uh we boarded a boat went to the lagavulin distillery in scotland Ooh. oh nice uh, okay. yeah that was that was probably a highlight cool. as far as distilleries go um yeah. and if i had to <laughs> choose a specific type of whiskey i mean bourbon's gonna be my favorite bourbon's always got a little bit of a sweeter tint to it um yeah and then probably scotch irish whiskey american whiskey nice <laughs> haven't tried really any japanese whiskeys that have knocked my socks off Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, I do have to ask: Are you a partaker in in marijuana? Do you do you? I'm not. Do you <laughs> uh, so, and not not for trial and and failure because <laughs> I have tried. <laughs> yeah. um, unfortunately, I I am a drinker. I'm not a smoker. Um, and. Huh. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't tried anything in the last few years since it's been legalized in California and it's a little bit more regulated. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, the few times that I have, I've tripped bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was one time where I, I think I told my friend like, dude, I, I can't feel my face shortly before I threw up in the gutter. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do well Ooh. with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't really drink that much or, or smoke, but I, but I do uh, do some edibles from time to time, and I've had some pretty crazy experiences. Like, like because the, the first, especially my my very first time, because I lived up in Washington, where it's where it's legal up there. Idaho, it's very not legal here, but mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but in Washington, uh, uh, remember that I took one that was like a ten milligram, like a little starburst thing, and I and. I waited about 15 minutes and it wasn't doing anything. And I'm like, what's going on? So I'm like, I'm going to take another one just to see what, what happened. That was my mistake because eventually it all kicked in. And uh, so I kind of like after a, a little while, I started feeling like the room was spinning. And then I decided to just go to bed. So me and my wife, we went to, to sleep. I wake up at like like 1 a.m. just like sitting straight up in the, the bed and I cannot stop laughing. I'm just laughing and laughing and laughing about nothing. So she wakes up. She's like, what are you laughing about? I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. Like, how do you make it stop? Because she smokes all, uh, marijuana all the time. So so she's uh, she knows all about that, that stuff. She says usually when, when she smokes, if she goes to eat something, it usually kind of helps calm her down and like just take some of the, the um, edge off. And so, so she's like, maybe we should go try eating something. And then I go in the kitchen and I'm like, like just cramming all this food in my 
my mouth and it's not really doing anything. I'm like, it's not working. How do I make it stop? And then she just starts cracking up laughing. She's, she's like, edibles are a whole different thing. Like, like, like food does not affect it. No. <laughs> so, so yeah, she had some fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to so, tell yeah. this story and I, I'm sure yeah. he's, he's not going to like it, but fuck it. Um, <laughs> sure. So uh, one of the first times, uh, so cousin Ryan and I are in real life cousins. Um, oh, no. And uh, we grew up together and then he moved to Washington and uh, he used to fly out um, to California and he would do like birthdays in California. We would do St. Patrick's days in California. And one of the first times he came out, um, he, uh, I had to go to work. He came out early or late on a Thursday and he was going to be spending all day Friday with my then roommate. And uh, my then roommate had like a brownie that he would, take small nibbles off of uh and ryan ryan knows his way around uh you know the marijuana and uh <laughs> and uh my roommate didn't have any to smoke so he offered ryan some and ryan ate the whole brownie oh <laughs> and he's like oh it's okay he's like i smoke a lot so it'll be fine and like <laughs> like four hours later my roommate texts me and he's like dude i think i killed your cousin I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, he's, I think he's dead. Like he hasn't moved from his spot. I'm not sure he's blinking. Oh man. And they were, they were both supposed to pick me up from work that afternoon. So I'm like standing outside of my office, like, where are these? So I'm calling them and they're like, dude, we're both like, we're way too stoned. We can't go anywhere. Oh, it's the worst. Like at that time I just started dating my wife. Uh, and so she gave me a ride back to the house and we were going to be taking Ryan out to a steakhouse for his birthday <laughs> so he he attempts to rally and we go to this steakhouse and he's just in agony the whole time <laughs> and uh the the waiter at the steakhouse learns it's his birthday so he brings him like a triple shot of jack daniels oh. um, and he's like hey this is on the house happy birthday and i'm like telling ryan like you don't have to take that like just, like justin and i will drink that don't worry about that he's like no i got it and it was the most like painful, like, like you know, glasses shaking, like, <laughs> taking the shot. It was just, oh, man. oh, it was oh. like driving nails into a coffin. It was like, oh my god, it's terrible. But yeah, old old cousin Ryan's had his fair share <laughs> nice, of nice. adventures with edibles. <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting because sometimes people like like they have those experiences, but then like my ex wife, like she'd smoke all day long every day, and, and like she'd be totally fine. Like like she preferred it because because it. With her, you helped her with some, uh, some anxiety and depression she had, and also some pain she had too. She had uh, some sciatic nerve pain, and so it just helped with all that. So, so she preferred it <laughs> to be uh, just high all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But, but well, we'll go from that into maybe a little more more serious question. <laughs> um, so, uh, name some people in your in your uh, life that inspire you or just make you really happy maybe some of your personal heroes some of the people that that are pretty important to your life and they can be anyone that that's dead or alive like it could be someone famous someone that's personal to you close to you and you got a couple my wife is definitely my most inspiring person to me um yeah. uh it, it i think this year alone my wife has run 12 marathons and it's not just because oh, she runs all of these marathons and we're vastly approaching the 70th marathon soon. Ooh, man. Um, but it's also just her determination. I mean, she, nobody can tell her that she can't do something. Um, and, you know, it, it, as we continue to go on in our lives together, I mean, we've been together now o over 10 years and still on a daily basis, like she inspires me. And, um, so I, my wife is definitely my hero. Uh, nice. She was my hero before we got together. She was my hero when we got married, and she's definitely still my hero to this day. Yeah, well, that's one of the, one of the best people that you want to marry. You know, someone someone that inspires you, and makes you want to be a better person, all that stuff. So, so yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, next question: Name something that that makes you unique, unusual, or different do you have anything like for me like this is just a little quirky thing uh, about me but 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 i well, actually two things so one i'm 
I am unable to sleep if there's any doors open like that I can see. Closet door, bedroom door, any of that for some reason. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll sit up all night long. I, I don't know what, like, uh, what it is. I'm not scared of anything. It's just one of those things. It's like, like some kind of OCD thing probably that I just can't sleep. And then also I w- was was born with a stutter that, that uh, some people know about, some people don't, that I that it's mostly uh, well, runs on my dad's side of the family. And, and so um, uh, he, he has a, a huge family. He had 12 brothers and sisters, so it's ginormous. And so so about four or five of them have it really bad. And so I've mostly overcome it, but but mostly um, starting and then stopping words like if, like it well starting words like like if, if I uh, try to say like a, a particular name with a certain letter, it, it's it, it's just hard for me. There'll be a little thing. So it'll look like I'm a little more more nervous than I am sometimes, but really I'm not mm-hmm. so much. It's just that stutter. So but do you have anything unique about you that maybe people aren't aren't familiar about or don't know? <laughs> uh, I absolutely hate to eat with my hands. Um, oh, yeah? I do. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if if there's a way that I can eat something with a fork, I will. Uh, <laughs> even if even if it's like a finger food, like I'll figure out a way to eat it with a fork. Uh, not because I don't want like my hands to get dirty, not because I'm worried about germs. I don't know. I just absolutely hate the feeling of eating with my hands. <laughs> Um, I have this weird pinky, uh, we call it the oh, death whoa. finger. <laughs> Gee, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So like, whoa. that's my, that's my hand straight. Uh, and so I definitely have weird death finger. Um, <laughs> I, I was playing football in high school and I, uh, batted a pass down and I looked and the finger was going this way and I, oh, I touched it and it snapped back into place and I was like, well, okay, it's good. So I just left it. Um, oh, so oh, yeah, kids don't, don't leave things like that. <laughs> um, and I'm, yeah. I'm outrageously tall, man. I'm six foot five. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So that I, I definitely tower <laughs> above a lot of people when I'm around. Um, I'm sure you get yeah, this yeah. question uh, a lot. Do you ever play basketball in school? <laughs> I fucking suck at basketball so really? bad. <laughs> I really do. Um, I was, I so I came from kind of a family of footballers. My dad was a footballer. My brother was a quarterback. My brother played college football. My brother played football in Germany. Um, so I, there was always kind of a pressure to play. Um, and I wasn't very good. I was like, I was like six foot five, but I weighed like 140 pounds, like soaking wet with clothes on. So I was just this like tall, thin rail. Um, But I, you know, I made it work for what I could do. Um, But I was a pretty decent baseball player. Um, And then I was a pretty decent, I was actually quite good at volleyball. Um, I mean, that's where the hype finally paid off for me. But (laughs) I coordination didn't kick in for me until probably like mid 20s. So, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, figuring out basketball was just too hard when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I tried playing basketball when, when I was in high school. I had played my first two years, and, and then I just, like, really hated the, the coaches that I had. I just didn't – I don't know. That just wasn't my thing after a while. I was decent, but I wasn't, like, great. Like, I could, I could come off – like, be one of the best guys off the bench probably. <laughs> that was about mm. me. So, so yeah. <laughs> but – uh, let's see. So, so uh, tell us a little bit, bit about your your uh, work. What do you do for work? Um, so, I'm a project manager um, for this company called Aspire. We okay. and the company owns um, a little over fifty Orange Theory fitnesses. Mm. Um, the the two guys that I work directly for opened the first chain of Orange Theory fitnesses in California. Um, and so we have we have all the orange series in San Diego, Orange County, uh, and the San Francisco and Oakland area. Um, and our new our our company just opened a second company um, called Restore Hyper Wellness, and it deals we have like large four person cryogenic freezing tanks. Oh, cool. uh, we do the red light treatment. We have hyperbaric treatments. We have uh, IV treatments. We do the red light saunas. Um, so the new, like all the new age kind of wellness stuff uh, is featured in our newer businesses. So I project manage for them um, and I help them build all of their new locations. 
and then I help them maintain all of their uh, existing locations. Um, it's okay. a little different than what I used to do. Um, fifteen for fifteen years prior to that, I was a I was a regional manager for uh, a, a nationwide gym called LA Fitness. Okay. And uh, I absolutely hated it there. God, I hated <laughs> yeah. it so much. It was very yeah. corporate structure um, and very, very corporate America. And man, I was, I was it, an executioner there. I fired so many people there. Like I would, <laughs> I would be sent to markets yeah. to basically clean house and then rehire uh, or new or excuse me, and then recruit new staff. Uh, like it was, it was terrible. I hated. Like every minute of it, and uh, but I did it because the money was right, and because I feel like they had a stranglehold on me for a little while. Uh, well, so, so, so you when I finally like, broke free, now I I ended up taking a job with these guys in 2019. Nice. So back then you were you're probably probably um, like George Clooney and up in the air, just going around. You got to you got to fire people, all that stuff. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Uh, I what I would say I was though is I was a Bob from Office Space. I was one okay, of the Bobs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would basically like sit down people and be like, "So what do you actually do here?" You know? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, yeah, whatever. You're out of here. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I've done the 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 cryo freeze tank. I, actually, I did one at a at an old school hip hop concert because we we had a big festival. So while I was in the tank. They had Coolio up on stage. I could hear him outside singing. So, oh, nice. It was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, his his voice did not age well. He sounded like a heavy smoker. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was right. like, P. Coolio, right? Yeah, that was late late in his career. But 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 uh, rest in peace to Coolio. He just recently passed away. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's see. So we go back and forth to the deeper to the simple ones. <laughs> Do you have a favorite color? <laughs> yeah, it, it, favorite color is green. Okay, nice. Doesn't nice. matter the shade. Yeah, it's yeah. All good. <laughs> nice, yeah. Yeah, mine's probably like a dark blue. Like it like probably the next car that I want to get, it's gonna be be like some kind of dark or midnight blue, something like that. Hmm. So <laughs> that's my next thing. My car's kinda got about another year or two left in it. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a, a new car, but it, but like shortages and the pandemic and all that doesn't make it easy. So <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh Let's see. Uh, what things in life have ever made you cry? Do you like maybe books, movies, personal experiences, anything like that that comes to mind? Jeez. Um, <laughs> okay, so things that have made me cry. I mean, it, it, you know, we'll start with the simple stuff. Like there has been some times in movies that have made me cry. Um, and you know, I, I the most recent one I think to make me cry is definitely. Uh, Avengers Endgame that, mm. you know, scene at the end when uh, all of them are coming out of the uh, the portals. Oh, yeah. That got me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a great moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, I mean, there were several cry-worthy moments in Endgame. <clears throat> um, obviously, you know, death of family members, you know, throughout my life have caused me to cry. I mean, most recently, yeah. uh, last year, my my Aunt Sandy, my dad's sister, uh, the oldest of the Haas siblings uh, of that generation um, was diagnosed with ALS at the beginning of the year. Oh, man. Um, yeah, and it, it uh, sadly took her in March. Um, mm. So it wasn't it wasn't a very long ailment, but it yeah, was pretty you know quick. with ALS it's it's so tricky because you know every week we would go and we would see her and every week she would lose. The functionality of this hand or she uh, lose the functionality okay. to walk and then she was bedridden and then she couldn't talk mm. and yeah it just it was one thing after another but we you know we all as a family had our chance to be able to say our goodbyes and that was definitely um a heart uh wrenching moment for myself yeah. my wife my brothers my sisters um especially my parents my dad was there uh mom and dad along with uh, my aunt's sister, my other aunt, were there when she passed, and they were all kind of holding her hand and everything. Oh, so man. it was, yeah, it was yeah. definitely a sad moment for the That's Haas rough. gang. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I would say that that would probably be the last time I I cried quite a bit. Yeah, for whatever reason, uh, 
in like I don't own any pets, but like all the movies always make me cry. Usually, when a dog dies in a movie, like an old yeller, or like uh, or like where the red fern grows. Some of those movies that just they just get me a Marley and me. Some of those they get me every time. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. dude, a few weeks ago, I was <laughs> just telling JTE this. A few weeks ago, uh, <laughs> my dog started ha having issues. And our oh, our bulldogs. He's almost eleven. Uh, oh yeah, so he's an old bulldog, <laughs> but I'm uh, we don't have kids, and I'm in no way emotionally prepared to lose this dog. Uh, um, yeah, and <laughs> when he start he stopped eating for several days in a row. And if you oh, know anything about bulldogs, they don't ever stop eating. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> that was it was highly suspicious, and I thought, boy, this is the end. And I, oh man, I was not. I couldn't sleep one night, and I got him oh. to the vet. And fortunately, the vet figured it out right away and we got the right medication for his infection and boom back nice. to his old self but That's yeah cool. there definitely would have been that would have been my most recent cry time if darby had passed <laughs> that's for sure yeah yeah uh yeah that's, a, that's always not an easy moment i think it's like a, a a cruel joke that god plays on us that 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 We'll almost certainly outlive almost all of our, our pets, so we're going to experience them at some point passing away. It's like really, you can't make them live like as long as us or even half as long. It's like come yeah. on, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Waiting but, for the cloning of pets to be legal, so we can just keep cloning. Yeah, our... right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh. Here you go. Uh. Have you ever been in, in a car crash before? Like any crazy. Oh, God. I've been in too many. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. So part of part of my jobs, of uh, at least for the last twenty years, have been road warriors. Um, and I, I mean, I've been on your show a number of times from the road, or yeah, <laughs> told you I couldn't make it because I was going to be on the road. So there's been a lot of of driving in my life. Um, I have totaled a few cars in my in my time driving on the road. Uh, <laughs> One of them was a uh, Dodge Charger. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, that was relatively oh, new. The Charger geez. got totaled. Um, oh, God, we had this really cool um, Honda Cross Tour. It was like a Dodge Magnum, but it was the Honda version of it. Okay. It was a sweet <laughs> car. Yeah, that was probably the worst one I was in. Um, and that one popped uh, the airbags, and I had the burns oh, okay. on my arms from the airbag. Um, yeah, that one completely totaled that car. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, yes, I've been in car accidents. <laughs> yeah, but no major injuries or anything from them. No, <laughs> I mean that's. I feel like that's par for the course in California, though. Unfortunately, our traffic here is so awful, uh, and there's just yeah. zero consideration with people on freeways. So yeah, it, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing that happens. Thank you for AAA insurance. <laughs> yeah, I usually try to avoid <laughs> driving in California because I do have family there, so I. I I've been through California a, a lot, and I try not to be the one driving because <laughs> it's just it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's see. All right, so here's a, uh, a couple kind of like time for. Well, the next section I like to call it the favorite section, like talking about some of your favorite things. So, on a salad, do you go with croutons or bacon bits, or do you care? <laughs> Can I get both? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For me, croutons are just dry bread that went stale. <laughs> it's like, it's like who really needs it? I don't know. Bacon, Fair enough. bacon. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but um, do you have a dream car that that you would like to own someday? <laughs> we got my wife's dream car this year, um, and that was uh, for a long time. That was mine too. Uh, it was uh, uh, we wanted a Jeep. Wrangler, um, and so earlier this year we we got our uh, a Jeep, uh, the Chief Edition Jeep Jeep Wrangler. It's pretty oh, nice. sweet. <laughs> um, cool. And then uh, these new Broncos that are out are so freaking sweet. Yeah, those are uh, like pretty cool. They're okay. so sweet. So <laughs> I definitely I, probably I mean for the longest time it was like a, the Range Rovers. I just I've always dug the look of a of like the white and black uh accented range rovers but oh yeah man these new broncos are awesome so i'm putting that in top category 
Yeah, I got to drive some of the the newer Range Rovers because I, I had a temporary job for a little bit when I was in between jobs. Where I was working for a car auction place, and they had us just just drive all these cars uh, uh, just through the auction uh, on the little building where, the, where everyone's bidding. And so you, you just drive through and you just sit there where everyone's making bid. And then you just drive out and you get, get in whatever the next car is and you just drive oh, through. Nice. So you're doing that, that like all day long. You get anything from like clunkers to like like really nice sports cars, a lot of Teslas, a lot of Range Rover, a lot of that kind of stuff. So so yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. That's <laughs> but, pretty cool. But I couldn't stay at that one too long. I didn't pay that that great. So I had to... Mm. to, to make that one short but um let's see um okay do you prefer if you were to drink it or do you uh sprite seven up or sierra mist or do you not have a uh a preference do you drink much soda uh i don't um we hardly ever have soda at the house honestly i my wife drinks a lot of ginger ale so i think that's probably okay. Nice. Um, but if I had to choose those, I don't know, probably Sprite. Yeah. I'm kind of the same way. Yep. Yep. Um, did you ever have a, a, a certain blanket or a stuffed animal you slept with as a kid or maybe even now? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I did have a, yeah, I did. I did have a stuffed raccoon, uh, that okay. I called Racky that I <laughs> nice. That I'm pretty sure is still at my parents' house. I don't even know. They may have given me Racky at some point in time. My <laughs> dog might be sleeping with him at night. I'm not sure. But nice. <laughs> yeah, I had a, when I was a kid, I had a stuffed raccoon uh, named Racky. That yeah, I took that. I took that thing everywhere. <laughs> yeah. For me, I had the the Sesame Street blanket that I would just drag everywhere, and I and I'm, I still have it out in in a storage box somewhere in our garage. I just I'm not sure. What, which box? It's one of those those boxes. It's out there somewhere. So, but but it's all torn up. It's got holes in it. It looks like a rag, kind of. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But but um, do you have a favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, mint and chip. Ooh, nice. That was my favorite as a as a kid. I've kind of moved more towards peanut butter and chocolate together. Anything like that. But, okay. But as a kid, though, I I get get mint chip all the time. Yeah. I'm really simple when it comes to ice cream and frozen yogurt. It's mm -hmm. it's always mint. It's yeah. always <laughs> going to be mint. Uh, and if mint's not available, then vanilla. Like it's yeah. that simple for me. <laughs> nice, nice. Not too complicated. Nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, uh, what's your favorite breakfast foods? Uh, I'm a big breakfast guy. Um, <laughs> I like eggs. Um, I love a good breakfast burrito. Uh, if you're ever in California, there's a spot in Boynton Park called Johnny's Junior okay. that may okay. make the greatest breakfast burrito. And I know a lot of people will <laughs> have their breakfast burrito place, but trust me, if you're in California and you're for, gonna go to Knott's Berry Farm, it's one mile from Knott's Berry Farm, Johnny's oh, nice. Junior, and be sure to ask for country gravy in your breakfast okay. burrito. Oh, okay. It will change your life. <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge breakfast guy too. That's my favorite meal of the day. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll eat breakfast for dinner, breakfast for lunch, like all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, what's your favorite non-breakfast food, like a like a lunch or a dinner type thing? Um, whew. favorite non-breakfast meal, uh, yeah. like style or like just meal in general. Just meal in general, just like what would be the actual like the food that would be your the type of food. Big pasta guy. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean we don't shy away from carbs in the Haas household. Uh, you know we gotta we got the misses to to carb load, so uh, <laughs> nice. I, I help. Just don't run. Um, so I definitely would say it's probably pasta related for sure. Yeah, didn't you go to Italy recently? No. <sighs> Yes, earlier this year, actually. Uh, yeah, but you got to eat some amazing food over there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There was not a bad meal in Italy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob West, uh, chime in. He's, he's funny. He gets one at the gas station, a country uh, gravy burrito, which actually at a certain gas station, depending, like, like I mean, it may sound kind of like it's like pretty dumpy, but there's certain ones out there. I, I'm not going to knock it until I try it. Dude, the gas stations in Italy have like full-on buffets. 
Oh yeah. It's all, oh, yeah, nice. it's awesome. There were like several <laughs> times on our trip where like in Italy where we would like, oh, we're gonna stop at the gas station for lunch. And you're you know, your first reaction is like, what? And then you get there and it's like, oh my God, I just had the greatest salad with pasta. Like combo <laughs> is so good. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were in New Zealand one time and uh, uh, our buddy Carl, the Kiwi over there, um, we were staying with him and his wife and uh, we were on our way to do a, uh, a glowworm tour. It was like you went into these caves and they were only illuminated by glowworms. Mm, oh, uh man. it was awesome and then on the way over there uh we stop at a gas station for lunch and he's like dude he's like and he just picks up these they look like nothing they're like this big wow and he's like <laughs> we're, he's like this is going to be our lunch and it was like dude, like he's grabbing this out of yeah it's like i've had gas station food it's yeah. not good it was yeah. the best meat pies i've ever had in my really? entire life oh my god i couldn't believe it, it was Better than any like country, uh, like the what are they called the country oh, pies shepherd's pie? yeah. or shepherd's pies that they have yeah. here in the U.S. Oh my God, I couldn't believe how good it was. And we oh, just man. randomly <laughs> stop at this little gas station along the way in the middle of nowhere awesome. and pick them up. Yeah, it's trust gas station food, people. Yeah, yeah, those are the best when you find those little gems in the middle of nowhere like that. Yeah, <laughs> but um, then it. I naturally have to ask what's your favorite dessert then. <laughs> um that's tough. I'm not a huge dessert guy. Uh you know what? I do like a good like berry pie. Okay. Like boysenberry, blackberry, blueberry, like raspberry, any berry pie, I think it's gonna be good. Nice, nice. Yeah, for Thanksgiving this year, all the women were were out of town. Like, like so we had, we had like the men making everything, and we could do all the the entrees and that. But the the pies and, and the rolls were the hard part. So luckily, we had my my mom pre make us some pies, and my sister in law pre make us the rolls. And in advance, we just froze them until till Thanksgiving because like we weren't about to attempt that. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but um, so going along with the food stuff, do you have do you have a favorite restaurant or maybe even a couple or? Yeah, there's a few. Um, in walking distance from my house, I have an awesome Italian place um, nice. called yeah. Pozzetto's. Huge shout out to Pozzetto's. Uh, they're one of my, outside of Italy, they're probably the best Italian food I've had in the U.S. Nice. Um, cool. There's a Himalayan place uh, that's also walking distance from my house. And yeah. it's been there for years. And my wife and I, prior to recently have only gone there once. Uh, and recently we went back and just, it was lights out so freaking good. So we've nice. been going back a little bit That's more awesome. frequently. So yeah, the Hill of Malayan place. And it's just literally called like Himalayan diner um, in San Dimas. It's quite good too. Uh, the Carl Strauss brewery, uh, which are, they're starting to pop up all over the place, but oh, nice. they're all over okay. California now. The Carl Strauss Brewery has the best food in Orange County, hands down. <laughs> it's so freaking good. Their beers are all right. Uh, but there's one right across the street from Angel Stadium. And so, if you're again, uh -huh. if you're ever in California, you're doing an Angel game, go to the Carl Strauss Brewery pregame nice. there. You eat dinner there, and you walk right there across the street to the Angels game. <laughs> nice. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, and then I'll give some love because uh, they, they have like six of our Christmas cards up on their wall right now. But <laughs> there is a Thai food place that uh, delivers that's near us. Uh, and my wife and I have lived here now for six or seven years. And uh, so we're on like first name basis, text message basis. Oh, nice. with the, uh, yeah, with the owner <laughs> of Top Thai Table. Uh, and they have a great, amazing Thai food. So if you're ever in San Dimas, you're good with food. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's hard to be either either L.A. or New York, like like as far as, as like restaurants and, and food go. Because uh, uh, like I was surprised when I lived up in Seattle, I figured there'd be a lot of great places to eat. Not really, not a lot of great uh, uh, restaurant. Like I, I really struggled to find anything good. And then I, I moved back to uh, to Idaho, to this little old Idaho in the middle of nowhere. And there's way better places to eat here, like way better. So I don't know what it is, but with Seattle it's more I don't know like like fresh fish like like, like 
they do have some really good like like fish markets a couple good sushi places but that's about it i never really found much else there so <laughs> but um let's see do you uh watch this combined uh what is your favorite holiday and then also what is your favorite time of the year Ooh, okay huh. um so <laughs> Being in California doesn't always mean uh, it's it's glamorously 70 degrees all the time. I absolutely hate the summers here, especially in, in our neck of the woods, because yeah. it gets yeah. it gets well over 100 degrees constantly. Um, yeah. So it's it's hot here and it's dry in in Southern California. Um, and I'm a, I, I like cold weather. I like to be able to throw on a hoodie. Um, so the uh, fall winter definitely is my favorite um st patrick's day probably will still be my favorite holiday um yeah we grew up in a like scottish irish household uh and so we always you know celebrated it as kids um but then getting older like in my life and able to go out and party and drink and stuff like that i mean we we used to go quite big with uh with st patrick's days and uh yeah, you know, our group of friends back in, you know, our late 20s really, really went at it for St. Patrick's Day. But still, it's fun. I, you know, I still own a kilt. Um, Christmas is nice. starting <laughs> to creep on me, and I used to hate Christmas. But I think because of how much yeah. my wife <laughs> likes Christmas, uh, I, I'm becoming more and more and more attached to it. So I will go with St. Patrick's Day followed closely by Christmas. Nice, nice. Yeah. Last year, me and my my uh, dad, we we tried to do it up kind of bigger for Christmas. We, we put up a bunch of decorations in the yard and and like all these cool lights on the house. But but where I live for whatever reason, it gets so freaking windy here. Like it's just windy all the time that like literally everything just blew over and like the lights blew off the roof. My dad's like, screw it, like oh, I'm not no. gonna put them back on. Forget it. Like I'm not doing that again. So he's like, he's like probably no lights this year. You can get these like 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 permanent lights that you can have on your house all year long. He's considered that, but they're like, like six grand. We did an estimate to like get those on your, on your house. They are expensive. So, so he's like, it was like, maybe we'll hold off on that <laughs> for now. But <laughs> my parents yeah. got tired of putting up lights. So what they did was they went and they have those light projectors that shoot them onto your house. Oh yeah. Like, there you go. That, like just project from like a small little projector. So <laughs> nowadays they nice. just have this little projector that shoots Christmas lights onto their house. I get it. That makes it easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do you do you have a favorite song of the moment or like or like any kind of songs or music you've been listening to recently? Um whew. okay. <laughs> Song of the Moment. This is so fucking stupid, but I'm gonna say it. No. Uh, sure. uh, recently I installed Alexa in the house. Alexa stop. Um, <laughs> and she's been uh in the mornings I've been like trying to play something to like get me going. Yeah. Um and the last like couple of times I've played Casey in the Sunshine Band, walking on oh, no. sunshine. <laughs> it's nice. like a Patrick Bateman, you know, like the classic, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um favorite songs though i mean i definitely uh it's tough because i have like if, if songs for me are kind of like a moment in the mood you know like yeah. if you're in one mood you're gonna play this song if you're in another mood you're gonna play this song but yeah <laughs> um my favorite song is uh your love is lifting me higher by jackie wilson oh nice made famously in ghostbusters too uh, yep. <laughs> of course that would be uh, a yeah, favorite right. for me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the "Walking on Sunshine" has been my morning song now a couple of times, uh, much to the dismay of my dog. Nice, nice. Huh? Yeah, for me, like I kind of, kind of grew up on on like punk rock and like like indie rock music, but then like recently though, it's just anything that I can dance to. So I've been more into like like pop music, oldies, all that kind of stuff. I listen to like a wide range, like. Like basically anything except opera music. Like I don't really listen to that because it just kind of gives me headaches sometimes when I listen to it. But but, but like anything else, like I'm pretty open to just about anything. So if you look at my my Spotify playlist, it's got everything, any kind of genre, anything you can think of. So 
So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how mine goes too. Uh, right. I, I I don't gravitate towards one genre. I mean, I, there's kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, let's, let's see. So, what do you most often do when you're bored or when you have free time? Like, do you do you have any like any go tos or or you? Or even any hobbies? Like, do you have anything that you're kind of into when you're, you got free time? Um, free time. <laughs> uh, that? Yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean, for a little while there, I was studying for movie trivia. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. But trivia was a trivia was kind of a part of uh, what we did anyways before I even you know got involved with the Schmodown. Uh, we had like a. <laughs> a weekly trivia game at uh, at a local brewery of ours that we would go nice. to, and we had yeah. our team and uh, the six pack, and we would show up every week. And nice. uh, so, yeah, trivia Dominate, was right? yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, trivia has always been kind of a uh, uh, a staple, I think, at least for the last couple of years. Um, we have a really good couple friend, Kyle and Amanda, uh, who we. Uh, started just, you know, going to his brewery to play trivia and then kind of became buddies. And so we'll do game nights with them. And they're like, they're like the movie game night in real life though. Like nice. they take, they take that shit way <laughs> serious. Uh, like it's way fun. more than like, yeah, way more than we would. And it's like, wow, yeah. <laughs> really wanted to win. Uh, I don't get a lot of time but like if i have had like a rough week and uh i feel like just shooting something then yeah i'll like throw on a video game for a little bit and oh, nice. uh just sh sure. try to shut my brain down and veg out on that um obviously movies are a big hobby but yeah you know uh this new show that benny and i are, are starting up is gonna i think fill that gap that hobby yeah. gap for both benny and myself um when it comes to uh, you know what life after what to do when we're not studying movie trivia, what are we going to be doing? We're asking yep. <laughs> other people about the movie trivia. So. Right. <laughs> yep. uh, nice. but, but yeah, I, uh, I don't trust myself playing sports anymore because I'm I'm too old, beaten up, and injured to uh, <laughs> yeah. to play sports. And I know myself, and I I will injure myself further for the purpose of winning. So I just stay away from sports nowadays. Yeah, I kind of know how that that go. That I tried going going snowboarding for maybe the last time. I used to go every single year, but it, it was like this last time, like for the amount of times that I I fall down and I have to try to get back up, and, it, and like it's not that I I get hurt, but I'm just so exhausted because I gotta like get on my hands and knees and then try to push myself up, and then it's like within the next minute I'm like like back on the ground over and over again. It's just like 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 yeah, like I mean. Much as as I love doing it, maybe it might like time to retire that. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I've tried snowboarding once, and uh, don't think I, I. I think I was more time on my ass than I was on the board. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've tried skiing, same effect. Um, I did try <laughs> paddleboarding uh, on oh. Thanksgiving actually this past week. Oh cool. Uh, and I didn't. I actually thought it was going to just be like skiing or, skiing or snowboarding, and I was not going to be very good at it. But uh, the older I get and uh, the uh, lazier I am, it turns out paddleboarding I'm actually pretty good at. So, Oh, nice. <laughs> That's that cool. Might be a, yeah, that might be a new hobby. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, um, i got to ask you this question because I'm curious what you would say. If you had three wishes, what would they be? And you can't. Can't wish for more uh, wishes, like Aladdin says, X nay on that, but but anything else. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I, I definitely think my wife and I's dream is um, to, like, it, we have we don't have children, so we travel quite a bit. Um, and that's that's kind of what we do. We, we yeah. work, we both work extremely hard. And then, uh, you know, when we're able to we we travel and lately it's right. been a lot of international destinations but um and we've been blessed to be able to do that yeah. um and so i think one of our dreams would be to have the ability to just travel wherever we would want to um 
And in this world, to be able to do that, I think that would certainly come with having the funds to be able to do that. Right. <laughs> uh, so I would definitely, if I were given three wishes, it, wish number one would be uh, adequate funds to be able to just travel wherever we would yeah. like for the rest <laughs> of our lives. Um, I've always like been fascinated with flight. Uh, yeah. like, and so I definitely think that uh, the ability to fly would be pretty awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, because of like how wishes were, I'd like want to make sure like I worked out all the kinks with that. Yeah. Or it wouldn't be like, okay, I'd have to be able to like fly like as high as I would want to go, but be able to control, like there would be certain yeah. stipulations because I've seen these as movies fast where you, you wish. Yeah, yeah. And it would be like, I'd only fly like a foot off the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the yeah. point of that? But right. <laughs> uh, I do think spontaneous flight would be awesome. Um, nice. and then, yeah, you know, of course we, we all live in the same world. We're all brothers and sisters, you know, regardless of race, color, creed, religion, politics, whatever. So yeah. I would definitely wish for world peace for sure. Oh yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, that Actually, sure... you know what? I'm going to trade in the flight one for, uh, a cure for cancer because cancer is the oh, fucking worst. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. That is the worst. Yeah. I've had multiple people. In my life pass away from that so yeah it's it's, it's not good so yeah but but yeah i think we do share the same uh passion for for uh, traveling like i've always said that if i could give up all my possession and everything that i have to just travel the world for the rest of my life i would do it like yeah in a heartbeat like like i, I would do it so so yeah that's what one big thing that we want to try to do with the, the uh, uh channel we did a little bit of travel vlogs when me and austin met up we went down to florida and went to to uh disney and universal we, we went on a whole trip down the east coast and, and stuff and we got a meet in person for the first time so that was cool and <laughs> yeah so we want to try to do more of that so hopefully fingers crossed we can do more than and then then put it on, on the channel for everyone to see so that, that's one of the long-term goals of the channel so but um let's see um Here's something kind of interesting. What do you want to be when you grow up? And I say that because, yes, we can all grow up a, a, a little bit more. Do you have any dream jobs or anything that you, you'd like to be be doing? Or are you pretty happy with where you're at? Um, so my goal in is at some point in my life, I want to be able to, like, wake up on just, like, a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> when I wake up and be able to turn to my wife and just go, hey, what do you want to do today? Uh, yeah, yeah. and so i definitely think like that's that's the end game goal um is to try to get there uh <clears throat> i have always wanted to like learn to like solidly play an instrument um mm. when i was younger i could play the harmonica um but not yes. great uh <laughs> i could play the trumpet but not great um <laughs> So I, I mentioned this earlier to or uh, earlier this year to my wife, and uh, I think I'm going to try to next year uh, start taking piano lessons. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, somehow mix that into my already <laughs> fucking crazy schedule. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've always wanted to be able to like master and play an instrument quite nice. So uh, yeah. what I would want to be when I grow up is someone who knows how to play an instrument. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well. That's funny because I grew up playing the, the the trumpet also, so I can play it, but it, but not great. And then like I, I took piano lessons as a kid, and like as a kid, I hated it. Like I, I like hated going to to piano lessons, all all that stuff. But now like, I kind of re re regret it because I know how to play the the right hand of the of the piano extremely well. I do not know how to to like like play the 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 left hand and be able to harmonize the the two. And then let alone read the music for the left hand side. I don't know what it is. So like I'd like to kind of learn that better. So yeah. <laughs> I know how to read music, but I don't actually think I know how to read the music. Like I was thinking about this the other day because I looked up okay. like piano notes and I I at that point was like, I can't discern which is which. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Like yeah. so uh oh, I'm gonna struggle with that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you mind if I grab water really quick? Sure, yeah. One sec. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But, but yeah, 
on a little bit bit more about piano lessons, I'll just tell you guys, anyone that's tuning in, I took piano lessons from my 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 aunt. So I was just saying to Phil when you, when you were gone, I took piano lessons from my mom's sister, and like she has a music degree, so so she taught all of us to to oh, nice. play piano. But and like she is amazing. She's she's uh, there's mostly either piano uh, or she conducts music too, and and so she she conducted choirs, she conducted big huge like like orchestra she played the piano in a couple orchestras so so i definitely have someone in the family that that could teach me if if i wanted to go back to it. we used to have a piano and then when we moved we got uh, well so my parents got got divorced so the the piano is still around it just at um at my mom's house and right now temporarily i'm living with my my dad he's going to help me out after I got divorced about a year ago, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what my next phase and next step is. So I got to figure out that a lot, which is coming up soon. So, but, but, uh, so whenever I go to my mom, I can use her piano over there. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, let's see. Uh, what do you think is the best thing about life? Like, what would you say? Hmm. Um, I mean, life is not fun without any kind of adventure. Um, and like this, this whole, you know, going on shows, you know, starting something up with Ben, you know, this is all brand new to me. Uh, I <laughs> never really had any ambition or aspirations like to try to be famous or anything like that. I just, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, and I, I, when I got into the Schmodown, it was really just because I, I wanted to do it and I didn't want to look back and say that I didn't try to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's what's great about life is, you know, there are so many things that like people say like, oh, I've always wanted to do this, but you know, it's just not in the cards. It's like, well, why not? You know, I, I, I think people need to to take a little bit of adventure and a little bit of risk sometimes and, you know, set goals and, you know, try to make things happen. I think that's what makes life fun. Um, yeah. What makes life great? I mean, look people you meet, relationships you develop, you know, falling in love. Uh, you know, it, it, I really do think that's what makes life great and worth living. You know, it's it's hard. I mean, it, it's not exactly a cakewalk every day. But, no. uh, and, you know, there's, there's often times that, you know, my wife will, and I will joke that I'm Grandpa Grumps. Because um, <laughs> yeah. I'll just be grumpy. But, you know, I, I do think... That, appreciating little things and finding things that make you know you happy every day and you know i could come home with the worst from the worst day ever the worst week ever and then i can come home and i can turn on the office with my wife and my dog and just <laughs> find peace you know and so I, yeah. I think that finding peace also you know you is different for every person and finding your peace also is what makes life great so yeah yeah there's a lot of reasons to love it yeah yeah but then I also have to ask, I mean, what's the worst thing about life? You already mentioned cancer. That maybe could be one, but, but like, what, but what do you think? Man, people are, people's intolerances are horrible. <laughs> you know, people, I, look, I'm, I'm fully respectful of others that have, you know, different views that I may have different opinions. And I know like I'll get on the show and I'll get you loud and yell and stuff like that, but that's just for fun. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and I, I support all people, but I, the opposite side is I, I, it kills me when other people are just deaf to someone else's thinking views, way of life. So I, I, I feel like intolerance is just a shit part of this life. Uh, yeah. Anxiety is a shit part of this yeah. life. Uh, <laughs> and man, that plays a huge part. And I think in almost everybody's life, yeah. um, whether they choose to admit it or not, but yeah, it, I mean, when I first, entered into the schmodown i almost quit because uh yeah i started we started to do these study sessions i can't hang like yeah. these guys are too good what am i doing in here but you know i it, my wife was the one who kind of was like hey you wanted to do this you can do this like settle yeah. down like it's okay you haven't even had a match just chill yeah. out uh yeah but yeah i i hate intolerances i mean that's where i i think you know we're the world is in such a crazy place right now because people can't, you know, sit down and two people just can't have a conversation, you know, yeah. 
it's terrible. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, I always thought the same thing. It's like, why does everyone have to believe a certain way? We all we're all unique. We're all we're all unique individuals, and and it's like we could just just show a little more uh, compassion and like and and like like like, like be okay that, with the fact that that um, everybody's different. We all have our our own thoughts, our own views, our own opinions, our own, our own uh, beliefs. And in my opinion, as long as those those views and opinions and thoughts aren't aren't harming anybody else, then I don't really see what the problem is. Let people do yeah. what what works best for them, you know. So yeah, <laughs> yeah that's kind of how I see it. But but uh, let's see. Do you have a favorite place? Like, like maybe like a moose happy place that you, yes. that you like to be. <laughs> my favorite place on this planet is. Uh, in Murphy's, California. Uh, okay. Murphy's already is an awesome, awesome little mountain town in okay. Northern California. It's maybe maybe 45 minutes west of Yosemite. And Yosemite is okay. also probably the most beautiful place that you can get in California. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but Murphy's, California houses, oh, there's old Benny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> no free speech no oh, yeah <laughs> naturally uh yeah naturally my partner would believe that um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but murphy's california houses the ironstone winery um and this place is my happy place i got married there uh i've seen the best concert i've ever seen in my entire life there uh oh, nice. we had our wedding reception in a cave on oh, these nice. grounds there's a lake <laughs> cool. on site there's an amphitheater we just recently went there a couple of weeks ago um we played in a cornhole tournament there and got our asses kicked i didn't <laughs> even know there was professional cornhole players until i went up against one and it was oh, yeah. like 21 to 2. um so yeah well, i've seen it on espn actually cornhole professional cornhole so it's, oh, yeah <laughs> they had this cornhole tournament i was expecting like people from around the like town to be there but no it was like an organization showed up like there was like legit professional like cornholers out there like wearing jerseys and shit like <laughs> never missing as i'm sitting there you know half a bottle of wine deep like <laughs> uh, <Nice. laughs> but you know i i absolutely adore murphy's we have we go every year uh and we have for the last 10 years um like literally the day after i proposed to my wife uh we were so enchanted by this place she like had a file like and as she handed to me she's like let's consider getting married here um so yeah it's <laughs> nice i attribute it to my happy place because i've never had a bad time at this place or experienced like bad times at this place and so if i was nice. looking for a happy place i'm going with the uh, you know obviously the opposite of a bad time so i've always just had a good time and it's it's quiet it's a peaceful area it's up in the mountains it's beautiful. I highly, 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 highly recommend it. That is my happy place. Nice, yeah. I'll have to check it out. Murphy's Point, because my my mom has a lot of family on the um, uh, in Northern California that they live in and around Santa Rosa, California, and so so I'm sure that's not crazy far from that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. <laughs> this one might might make you think for a, a minute, but but. If you could pick only ten things in this entire world to to own in your possession that and, and they can be they have to be real things, but they they can be be things that, that you already do own or or things you would like to own. What would they be if you can only pick ten? Ten physical things I want to own. Yeah. Um. Whew. I mean, I'll take I'll take one from Rocket Raccoon, and I'll say Bucky's arm. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so let's go. put that let's put that on the list. <laughs> sure. Um, did you see the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh okay, okay. okay. I don't, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil yeah. it. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh gosh, yeah. I might have to pass on this one just to put some thought into it. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit of a thinker. <laughs> Yeah. that's for sure um yeah we can come back to it or, or, or see how it goes. want to own yeah or 
or things that you already do own. Like maybe you have things that are like like sentimental or things that that, that you own already. You know. So, hmm. but we'll but come yeah, back to that one. I got to put some sure, time yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. Uh, so, what are some of your your favorite things that you've ever done before? Like like favorite moments, whether they're just like experiences or trips or like just like like whatever. <laughs> um. Again, I've been extremely fortunate in my life to have done quite a bit. Um, uh-huh. I've jumped out of planes. I've swam with sharks. Uh, <laughs> I've done quite a lot. Um, yeah. So the the glowworm caves in New Zealand was definitely a, a, it is probably top ten. Um, right. I we did this uh, last year. Um, we my wife and I went on a quick trip to Belize. Uh, we booked a bunch of stuff pre COVID, and then when the pandemic hit, we kind of had to stuff a lot of things like into the last couple of months um, of last year. <laughs> Otherwise, they were all going to expire. So. Uh, nice. like within like three weeks of each other, we went to Belize in Cancun. Um, oh, wow. I know, for, yeah, first world problems, but, um, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we went to Belize, uh, and while in Belize, we did a couple of like really awesome things. Um, we went to the stingray and shark alley, uh, and we jumped into the water with just hundreds of nurse sharks everywhere around oh, us yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. stingrays all over dolphins in the water sea turtles it was incredible um, <laughs> and then like the next day we did uh it's called the atm cave uh and they uh, i wish that they allowed photography but they don't uh, um because it's you you start by hiking a mile into the rainforest uh, um and as you're hiking towards this cave there's howler monkeys up in the trees and they're screaming at you. Oh man. Um, so you're already like feeling like Indiana Jones going on this. And then you get to the entrance of this cave and it's underwater. Oh wow. You've got to swim like 30, 40 feet. Uh, and there's these little cichlid fish that are just kind of nipping at you as you're swimming (laughs) through this water and the entire, like the entire cave is filled with water too. So you're not only like cave climbing, you're also at, at like there's points and times where you're you're in about this much of the cave and you're up to your neck in water and you're just kind of pushing yourself along it's oh, I, I kept <laughs> i kept saying it like the, the way that this thing looked i'm like oh my god like this is seriously indiana jones stuff yeah um <laughs> not that kind of atm cave benny um <laughs> yeah but uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then you, you get to the area, uh, you get to the end of the cave, and there's still skeletons, skeletal remains from Aztec sacrifices. Oh wow! <laughs> that are in there, and that's the reason why they don't allow photography is because some numbskull a few years ago dropped their phone and it shattered one of the skulls. Oh shit! But they're perfectly preserved skeletons. It's it, it's absolutely crazy. Um, Man, yeah, we've done quite a bit. I mean, we've ridden gondola tours and in uh in venice um uh, the whale sharks have eluded me um that's still on my to-do list uh okay. <laughs> i just so badly just want to swim in the water with whale sharks i've been in a shark cage a couple of times oh wow uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah they chum the water and the sharks come up and you get in the cages cool. with them uh that's uh i've got a weird fascination with all things sharks yeah. <laughs> um, so it's not enough for me to just like watch them on TV. I need to get into the water with them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I kissed the Blarney stone in, in Ireland. I've been oh, to nice. the Guinness. <laughs> yeah. I've been to the Guinness factory. Um, oh gosh. Iceland. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So, I, I've been in the largest, uh, glacier in Europe. Uh, I've been to the highest point in Europe, uh, recently, uh, when I went to Switzerland, John Frau Jacques, uh, which is basically the highest Alp uh, in Europe. Uh, I oh, snorkeled the Sofa Fisher where the water is zero degrees, and the water is so pure that there's oh. actually zero oxygen in it, so nothing lives in it. It's just freezing cold water. Oh, man, uh, zero degrees. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the Aurora Borealis. Um, yeah, I've, like I said, I've lived, I've been fortunate in my life to have a lot of adventures. Uh, 
And I'm really, truly grateful to be able to do that. And we have so much more coming. Shoot, in April, yeah. <laughs> uh, April, my wife and I will be going to Egypt. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Then we're doing a Nile cruise. Uh, (laughs) Then we'll be going to uh, Jordan. So we're going to go to uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That city built into the rocks. Yeah, that is awesome. (laughs) Shit, I went to Oktoberfest uh, at at the end of September this year. and uh, Uh Yeah, we're the later hosens and... Oh, you uh, all that, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had way too much beer. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I've been extremely fortunate in my life to be able to have such cool adventures. Uh, I Once again, you know, my wife, the hero, um, also shares that affinity for travel. And, uh, you know, we'll, she'll suggest something to me. And I'll say, yeah, that sounds like fun. And the next thing I know, she'll have, like, 10 options should be like, dude, what do you think about this while we're there? It's like, yes, let's <laughs> do awesome. that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, again, I've, I've done a lot of cool things. Uh, look up the, I hate to call it the ATM game because of Betty's yeah. joke, but yeah. <laughs> if you get a chance, Google it. Uh, it's in Belize. It's awesome. I, like, I seriously couldn't, like, the whole time we were doing it, I just kept saying, like, I can't believe we're actually, like, doing this. Like, this absolutely <laughs> seems like something out of a movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 uh, my family wants to either do a cruise or, or, like, some kind of, of a Caribbean trip, like, like, a, of a, of that sort, maybe even something in, like, Central America, if possibly. So that might be on the to do list. My, my, my dad and my, my, brothers they they told me it kind of last minute so i wasn't able to really prep for it. i really wish that I, they could go they got a trip to peru uh come they're gonna go to machu picchu and so, that's a, that sounds amazing and, we, and then we want to try to visit a, a few like at least one other spot in either, yeah, either the caribbean or or central america so, so that's on the to-do list this year so so yeah <laughs> but but yeah uh also i uh, shout out to him to uh, one of the guys that I used to do a show with, Ben Rayner. He's he's in the chat with. Me. Hey Ben, what's up, hey. buddy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, let's see. Uh, so I gotta ask, since you're a big a big uh, movie buff, what are your favorite movies? You can go like top five, maybe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> let's, Ghostbusters, right? <laughs> yeah, let's start with the obvious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I'll give you top five. Uh, Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jurassic yeah. Park, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, uh, Avengers Endgame, and ooh, what do I want to slip in that top five? <laughs> oh, come on. This is an easy one. The Burbs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Classic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think out of, of that top five, I, I think Endgame and, and, and Indiana Jones and um, Jurassic Park, they're all at least like top 15 for me. So they're they're up there for me, so yeah <laughs> um uh so i'll combine these these two but but do you have any favorite books or or even include comic books like i don't know if you've ever read comic books or anything but but do you have any favorites so i still every wednesday morning uh i wake up and i download comics oh nice Marvel comics <laughs> and That's awesome. it's what i read to put me to sleep at night. I'm reading a oh, Spider-Man nice. comic as we speak, actually. Um, <laughs> so I do... I go to Spider-Man. Yep. yep. So <laughs> Wednesdays are, are still comic book days. Um, <laughs> there is a... I mean, my favorite run of comic books, there was this uh, kind of a short series that Marvel released a few years ago called um, The Fear Itself. Mm, yeah. It, oh, God, it was so yeah. good. It's so um, good, yeah. And then the first couple of editions of the uh, of the Ultimates were were quite good too, uh, especially yeah, when they the came out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it was just it was just a different take on you know the guys that you were seeing in everyday comics. Well, um, funny enough, too. I was going to say real, real quick, my my uh, I have an uncle that's a big big comic book reader, and, and I, like usually when he's finished with with the comic books, he'll pass them on to me. So he gave me a, a big box, and they had. And both the ultimate and fear itself in there. So I've read those. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I dug the fear itself edition um, quite a bit. Uh, I do uh, obviously love a lot of like the 
uh, the classics. But, you know, I had a growing up, I had a huge thing for Michael Crichton novels. And so I mm. would just pour through anything Michael Crichton I could yeah. get my hands on. Um, you know, Jurassic Park, I read the book before the movie had come out. Oh, nice. <laughs> if you've ever read the Jurassic Park book, it's quite it's different. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Then the movie it's like Muldoon's yeah. out there with a rocket launcher like taking yeah, out raptors it, and yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's quite uh an interesting <laughs> differ from the movie. Uh yeah. I actually believe that I won speaking of Benny Hamlin. I believe <laughs> I won and Benny needs to be reading Jurassic Park the novel if I'm not mistaken. Ah. <laughs> there he you may go, have, Benny. He may have beat me in a double or nothing. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he still needs to read Jurassic Park. But Jurassic Park, the book, is one of my faves. Um, of Mice and Men, I still think is such a great, oh yeah, you know, story. So yeah, I, definitely, uh, definitely a comic book fan. I mean, that's still to this day how I how I fall asleep. Probably yeah, has been for the last ten years. Yeah, that's one of my my go tos every time that I'm on an airplane. I'm always reading comic books, so I'll do that on, all the time. But but yeah, like I grew up reading. Reading like a lot of Spider Man and X Men, uh, mostly like all the uncanny X Men and like all all of that, and then and then I'm hoping they can pull it off as a movie sometime, but I don't know if they're gonna do with it with this next Craven the Hunter movie. But I really want to see Craven's Last Hunt. That's one of my mm. my all time favorites uh, stories from Spider Man. So so I don't know if they'll do it right out of the gate, but like maybe sometime way down the road. So yeah, yeah I don't trust that Venom verse. Uh... I know. So really no, at all yeah not um, very good. yeah <laughs> i would feel much better about it if marvel had said this is the next spider-man villain that we're going to do is craven yeah, right. i would really like i feel like marvel can do craven right um but yeah i yeah. mean craven's last time you know you got to get dark and i don't know if marvel's gonna go that dark <laughs> yeah no <laughs> pretty but... sure we're not gonna let craven kill peter parker yeah yeah right <laughs> yeah i mean you never know like i don't know what they have that's that's gonna be dark maybe blade maybe i don't know like like how dark they go with an, an upcoming character but but who knows i guess we'll 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 find out but <laughs> um let's see so so here's an interesting one what or or who it makes you laugh the most like sorry one more time will you mind oh, oh uh, what or or who makes you laugh the most? What do you find the most funniest? It could be a person, a thing, anything. Uh, Benny Hamlin's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> you guys probably know that by now. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. He gets me going. He has the craziest one-liners that I don't know where he pulls them from, but they're just sheer genius. <laughs> yeah. um, my dad and my brother both, uh, like, I, I think all three of the Haas boys, um, have pretty good sense of humor, myself included. Um, but yeah, my dad it can get me going like there's no tomorrow. And he uh, he has kind of a unique way of just being able to like throw humor into uh, like almost any situation. Um, and I it's always been an admirable trait of my father's. But yeah, my father and my brother can get me going in a in a heartbeat. Nice. Yeah. Well. Well, as far as Benny, we had him on for our Thanksgiving episode for for best awkward family situation and like uh, for a tournament fights, we like to have fun and just so you can vote for literally any reason. So he just had these off the wall kind of one liner kind of reason for that like were they're pretty good. So like I definitely highly recommend that that episode because it's one of our kind of more strange and off the wall ones. So yeah, <laughs> it's a good time. And then and also my oh my dad too. Like like my dad makes me laugh so hard because. And we like to call him the sniper. So like he'll just be be like kind of even keeled and kind of not not really all that funny. And then out of nowhere, he'll have these like 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 uh, lines or like quips that, that are just so good and just hit so hard. So he just has those little snipers that he they just put like just come out of nowhere. So yeah, <laughs> they're pretty good. But um, let's see. Do you, well. I'll combine the next two also. Do you do you have any favorite board games or or like party games or also video games? Like, do you have any? Ooh, okay. Um, so <laughs> a couple of uh, – for a while there, I was completely undefeated in Monopoly. 
uh, <laughs> like oh i maybe in my life uh, oh, wow. and and i bragged about this to benny hamlin and then he put me in my place uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite yeah. quick uh multiple times uh i had to revisit it because i hadn't played it in probably a decade um uh, and so i went back and uh started playing like the mobile version of it and i got in i got in a couple of wins but i'm pretty sure he still got like three or four above me yeah <laughs> monopoly has been one of them um i mean as far as like video games i'm the video i mean the halo series you know it has been i i at least for me, one of the more consistent series that, yeah, uh, in like in my memory that I can think of. And every time there hasn't been one Halo game that hasn't like, or that has come out that I haven't like got it like the first week and played through it. Um, and so I definitely think that there's like, I mean, while they've like this most recent one wasn't very good, uh, I yeah. still play the hell out of it. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, and and still enjoyed it for what it was. So as far as video games go, that was great. There was a Ghostbusters game for the oh, yeah. uh, Xbox One. I, I think there's a new one that just came out. I I, I yeah, not too sure, but uh, there was an right. old one that had all the care like that w- had Bill Murray, had Dan Aykroyd, had Harold Ramis, yeah. uh, and it was it was a lot of fun to play like the online edition was yeah. was stupid but like <laughs> if you played like the uh, actual like game itself it was a ton of fun it was so much fun to just like you're the new guy you're the rookie you're the new ghostbuster like it was a ton of fun so uh um, yeah, i think that that ghostbuster game they made it as if like like there would have been like a uh like a ghostbusters 3 they kind of played it out like that yeah Yes. Uh, yeah. There yeah. was a whole storyline. Uh, Evo yeah. Shandor was the bad guy at the end. Yep. Like it, yeah. yeah it was a ton <laughs> of fun. So, um, yeah. and then our, our most recent game, cause it's about the only game that I think my wife and I can compete with our <laughs> crazy game night friends, uh, is phase 10. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 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 <laughs> well, if you ever come to, to the Anderson house, man, we have some intense game nights. We, like I probably own over a hundred different board games. Like I own so many, and like there was one one of my obsessions for a, a long time. I've kind of cooled off on. It. I haven't been been going as as hard on the board games, but but yeah, but I've gone as as far as to create my um a couple of my own board games, my own card games that I'm hoping to maybe maybe make into something that could actually be mass produced and put in stores. So oh. so hopefully there's a couple um. Um, card games. One, one's kind of similar to Cards Against Humanity. It's like that. Um, oh, okay. A, yeah, and there's another one that that's like a celebrity kind of naming game that, that has some trivia elements to it. And and maybe if I can do it, I also like to make it into an app too. So so that's one of my like big goals for this year. Try to uh, to um I try to make some of that because I I have prototype versions made. I made a copy for for me for my. my my dad and for all my siblings to share that kind of gets passed up around so we play those whenever like if you want a good laugh oh my gosh and like especially with my family like we'll we just be we'll be like crying laughing playing these games so so yeah they're a lot of fun so <laughs> should come out with a digital version of it and incorporate it into some of your shows yeah yeah that's kind of the uh like i i kind of started like a, a little bit of that we have we have an occasional show that's called Top Twelve Frenzy because I have one other game that that's based on some some top twelve lists. So I've got about three or four different games that I'm kind of working on, and and so we we have done that one, but I'm hoping to maybe incorporate some other ones into it too. So so we'll see. But but um, let's see. Um, do you have a favorite animal? Um, yeah, I mean it's gonna be my bulldog, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it's yeah. funny. Be, before Darby came along, I was not uh, a dog person um, at all. And then yeah. that's kind of turned, and now dogs are like my favorite thing. So nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, like I think for me, like I really like monkeys. I always thought it'd be really cool to have like one of those little helper monkeys that like like go and grab things for you and bring it back because I used to know this 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 couple that that were uh, uh, friends of mine and they both had uh, 
they had muscle dystrophy. And so they had a helper uh, monkey. They were, I think it approved as a service animal. Like they would order food. And like, I, I think I went over there once and they had some, some, some Thai food and, and, and the monkey was, was literally feeding it to them. Like they had little peppers and they had hands like a human, almost just feeding it to them. I'm like, wow, that's oh. like pretty cool. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's so <laughs> creepy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So yeah, <laughs> but but um, let's see. Would you uh, name your helper Monkey Mojo? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a good name. Pray so. for Mojo. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, okay. I'm um, here. You go. If money was no object and you could spend the day doing one thing, what would it be for just one day? If money was not an object and I had one, oh, yeah, that top the top thing on my list that I want to do is swim with whale sharks. So oh, yeah. I would, I would <laughs> be go. in, I would be in the Maldives because uh, they're always in the Maldives. Yeah. Uh, so I would be in the Maldives and I would be swimming with whale sharks. Yeah. I'll have to ask if my, my brother and my sister-in-law did that. They just went on a trip to the Maldives like about a, about a year and a half ago, and they swam with some sharks there, I'm pretty sure. They actually stayed on like like one of those hotels that goes out over the water, and it's kind of like situated out on the on mm. the water there. So then it was really cool. You look down and see all the sea life underneath. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. We're going to, for our 10-year anniversary, which is coming up in a couple of years, that's our plan is to go to the Maldives. Oh, nice. And- stay in a place <laughs> almost similar exactly to what you're but yeah please let me know if they swam with whale sharks yeah i'll let you know because they... <coughs> my brother has a youtube channel he doesn't really do much with it but he but like he's really good at like credit card points and so he knows how to get, get mm. all these crazy deals for like hotels like how to fly first class for free just on credit card points all these crazy things and and so they're able to go to the, to the maldives for a super cheap and he he documented a little bit on it on his YouTube channel, so I have to, I have to maybe look in it and see. But the, but the purpose of it, the YouTube channel is called the Point Show, and he, and he just basically teaches people how to use the, all their credit card points right, the most efficiently. If you want to want to go and, and, and like uh, just um, travel for next to nothing, then yeah, it's a pretty pretty helpful thing. So yeah, <laughs> but let's see. Um, so. Uh, here's something you can do one or you could do do two this one a little bit of a thinker so if you don't have something right away that that's fine but but it's, tell me one or two two memories from any point in your your life that that just really stand out to you it could be a funny story it could be just a quick thing that you remember or something that, that was really meaningful to you is there anything that that maybe comes to mind just a moment that it just really stands out um whew. <laughs> Yeah, you are bringing the heat. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could always have some time to think about it. Yeah, wanna, I, I, I definitely, I definitely um, probably want to think about that one. Let's come back sure, to sure. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Let me plug in my laptop really quick. We're about to die. Sure, Let's yeah, see. yeah. <laughs> sound, sounds good. Yeah. But for anyone watching, I, I plan to do more of these interview shows so if anyone who's maybe been on my my show you want to do a little interview get an insight into your life let me know and we'll try to set something up but all right yeah Lay it on me. <laughs> all right so uh, next question would you rather if you you had a, a choice would you rather uh ride a bike ride a horse or drive a car do you have a preference i've not ridden a horse enough in my life <laughs> to be like, oh, damn, I re-, like that's going to be my first choice. Um, yeah, I'll probably say car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It kind of makes sense. It's kind of the logical choice, I feel like. <laughs> but yeah, one of the things I really want to do, if I can uh, do, I've only, uh, I rode a horse twice in my life, but, it, but I've always wanted to, to go on a trip to the Grand Canyon. I've never been to the, to the Grand Canyon. You can do it. We can ride either a, 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 a horse or a donkey just in and out of the Grand uh, um, Canyon. And then also, I want to try to go go uh, whitewater rafting. I forget which river flows to the Grand Canyon. If it's the, the, 
but that's the but Colorado yeah, but, River. Yeah, Colorado. That's what I thought. Yeah, so uh, I always like to do that. I feel like the Grand Canyon, is something that like everyone used to see at least once in their lifetime. You got to do it. So I agree, one hundred percent. You absolutely <laughs> need to see it. Um, yeah, I'm not whitewater rafted the Grand Canyon, but I I have been whitewater rafting three times, and I, man, that is the coolest thing. I absolutely yeah, like. Yeah. It's one that's of my fun. favorite things. Uh, like we've done, I would go whitewater rafting every week if time yeah, permitted. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like it's a lot of fun. I've probably been about a dozen times. Yeah. It's a lot oh, of fun. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, see, so yeah. what is your, your, um, go-to song for karaoke night or, or would you ever sing karaoke? Do you, <laughs> uh, so go-to song is sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. Um, okay. and it's simple because you sing that song and everyone in the in the crowd does the ba ba ba. Yeah, so exactly. You don't so, even really need to sing more than one karaoke song to make an impression at the bar. You sing <laughs> "Sweet Caroline" and everyone will know you and high five you as you walk off because they did the ba ba ba. So, yep, <laughs> "Sweet Caroline" that's my one and only. Yeah, yeah. My my go to is probably um, I anything by journey because i have most of their songs memorized or anything about the band cake which which if you know mm. cake they they sing very slowly so it's easy to sing along with them so <laughs> so it just makes it easy <laughs> but um all right here's kind of a, of a simpler one i mean hopefully but it says if you had to which would you would you rather do would you rather do the dishes mow the lawn clean the bathroom or vacuum the house for a for a chore I like gardening, so uh, I probably yeah. choose to mow the lawn. Honestly, <laughs> gardening yeah, would, is relaxing. Yeah, I would do it, but I, but I have really bad allergies to fresh cut grass, like horrible allergies. So that makes it kind of tough. But but <laughs> but um, okay. I uh, if you could go to the future or the past, which would it be, and why? And and also, where would you go? Um, I actually feel like I'd probably want to go to the past. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's several er like eras that I, I would just want to like experience, I don't know, for a day or, you know, a week or something. I mean, uh, you know, life after World War II seems like an interesting area. I mean, a, 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 a era, excuse me. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I would like to see what, America looked like before it was uh, so populated, you know, yeah. so I'd like to go maybe back to like the old West and just, you know, mm -hmm. be able to see like what like Southern California looked like before, you know, there's a billion people living in the state of California. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, yeah, I yeah. definitely would want to travel into the past. Uh, I would be scared to go into the future because I, who knows what the hell, you know, mankind's going to be up to, in, I know, yeah. you know, in 30, 40 years. So uh, I think Might the past... Might some nuclear war or whatever. Who knows? Right, exactly. <laughs> so I think the past is probably going to be a little more uh, joyous for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my um, crazy prediction, I think that, that mankind will eventually find a way to do time travel. It probably won't be in my lifetime, but I kind of feel like it, it might happen. I don't I don't know. That's just my wild and crazy prediction, though. <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> but, then he almost uh, figured it out. He almost figured out perpetual motion, um, and he almost figured out time travel. Uh, yeah. Like literally a few weeks ago, both at the same time, believe it or not, while oh, well. he was cooking Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> oh yeah. man, that's crazy. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, I wonder, wonder how he pulled that off. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um do you have a favorite author? You kind of mentioned Michael Crichton, maybe that. Yeah, uh, he'd probably fit into that category. Uh yeah. <laughs> I you know, I've gone back and reread some of his work and he, some of his stuff is aged. Um uh and maybe aged out a little bit but yeah I, I think michael crichton probably i mean i i got so much joy out of him when i was a kid that uh he'll probably fill that top author spot yeah that, well he's one of my favorite authors too like i didn't read jurassic park until after the, the movie but i did read the lost world before the the movie came out so mm. so I read, I read that and, and actually that's quite different too so 
So yeah, <laughs> and also some of his other ones, Congo or like the the uh, the Andromeda Strain. Some of those I, I remember reading; they're all pretty solid. So <laughs> they were great. Yeah, yeah. But uh, would you say your favorite uh, director? Um, who? I Spielberg's gonna probably take the cake for that one. I think we're yeah, gonna go yeah. like Spielberg, Zemeckis. I mean, I think I love everything Taika is doing right now. I think Taika Waititi yeah. is doing great. Um, I'll I'll even defend Thor: Love and Thunder and say that you know you know there's a few too many jokes in that one, but uh, yeah. the emotion still hits. Some of the humor still hits, you know, and there's a decent story in there. So, yeah, yeah I, uh, I think Taika is definitely doing good stuff. But, yeah, I'll, I'll go Spielberg, Zemeckis, and then Taika Waititi. Yeah, Taika Waititi is my favorite director. And, like, probably, probably like, right up there, probably Taika Waititi, then Spielberg. I'm also a big David Fincher fan, so I'd go Fincher mm. for me, too. So, yeah. <laughs> but, um... What are your favorite film scores? Um, so my all-time favorite is the Back to the Future film score. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, I awesome. I could just listen to the dun, 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 and just get fired yeah. up <laughs> listening to that alone. Um, so, yeah, Silvestri, I mean, obviously Indiana Jones, uh, doesn't matter if it's Raiders, doesn't matter if it's Temple <laughs> of Doom, doesn't matter if it's, you know, uh, Last Crusade. They're all great. Yeah. Um, you mean you can't go wrong? Star Wars is obviously one of the iconic oh, yeah. John Williams ones. Um, as far as like soundtracks go, uh, oh, Star Trek First Contact has an amazing mm. score. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I, really I just good. recently downloaded that like set of scores and was like, shit, this this is really good. Um, <laughs> as random as it is for a Star yeah. Trek movie, but. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, I mean, as far as like movie scores go, uh, dude, you just the Guardians of the Galaxy kill it oh, with yeah. their music <laughs> selections. Uh, like volume we, one, yeah. We we it's went awesome. to uh, a couple of weeks ago. We went to uh, in Southern California. We have a like emerging wine country called Temecula, and it's maybe mm -hmm. like an hour and a half from where we live. Uh, so it's a nice little like escape. Um, and we went to this winery. And uh, the guy was just playing basically the Guardians of the Galaxy mix at the winery. Oh, nice. <laughs> and the, the owner walked by and I was like, dude, is this the Guardians of the Galaxy mix? And he goes, hey, he's like, every time he goes, I put this on every single uh, Saturday. He's like, it yeah. kills <laughs> with people. Yeah. Here. I was like, it really does because it's just a mixture of like great music. Yeah, just so good. Yep, yep. Classic, yeah. Yeah, there's some good ones. Yeah, my, uh, probably one of my my favorite movie scores is definitely E.T. Like I'm a huge E.T. E.T. fan, especially like if you watch at the 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 end of the the uh, movie and then going into the the end um, credits, they they have like a mashup of like 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 all the best scores from the entire movie just melded together so well it just really gets me fired up. Like it, it's just really good. So uh, yeah, it'll be a sad day when when uh, when John Williams passes away because I know he's getting old, like up there in age. So. But, it will so, be, yeah. but what a legacy right there. I know, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he's definitely in my opinion, he like he's the goat. The yeah, goat I agree. Lines, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. But um, let's see. Do you have any favorite quotes? Like it could be like maybe a movie quotes or like or like just like a, a general like like life quote or, or like anything like that? Um, Oh, I left it over there. Yeah, I, uh, I have a whole book uh, and I wrote down a ton of quotes uh, yeah. that are my favorite, but uh, some of the few that I can remember um, is uh, Winston Churchill, Churchill said, you know, uh, fear is not constant. Uh, failure it is not, uh, or no, excuse me, fear is fleeting. Uh, failure is not yeah. constant. You know, it is the courage to continue um that that counts and so yeah. churchill one always stood out to me uh there's a john old john wayne quote that says being the good guy uh is standing up to darkness or is saddling your boots and standing up to darkness um oh, nice. 
it's not the years, it's the mileage. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark right there. Yeah. That's Indiana <laughs> Jones, and sometimes that's how I feel uh, yeah. at the end of a long day. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, there's the do or do not, you know, uh, yeah. Yoda, Yoda, that's a good one. But yeah. Um, oh, and uh, – Oh gosh, I'm totally blanking on it right now. So I won't even I won't even say it, but yeah, those are some of my faves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are classic ones. That's always one of my my strengths when it when it comes to like I'll re- reveal one one here for any movie uh, trivia. Like if you give me movie quotes like that, I always kill it in in, in uh, movie quotes and trivia. So so yeah. <laughs> so that like I'll use use movie quotes in in my everyday life. I'll just be. They're having a conversation, then movie quotes pop in. I just spout them out as part of the conversation, you know? So that's always fun to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, the quote that I was going to say was uh, from Michael Scott I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Stitious, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the best, yeah. Yeah, I need to go back and rewatch The Office. Like, I, I've like seen it all the way through once, and then I saw, like, like just rewatch some of the the best episodes of my favorite ones like 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 hands down my my favorite episode has to be the when they do the, the like, i don't know the official name but the meredith baxter or like like fun run for the cure or whatever oh, the rabies run, run. Oh, yeah God, yeah it's so good it's so good just just like all the insane like wackiness that just, just goes on while they're doing that yeah it's crazy <laughs> it's so good <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um let's see uh surprises yay or nay do you like surprises yeah sure yeah yeah <laughs> i know there's some people that that like 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 don't do surprises so <laughs> but um do you care very much about spoilers like are you one of those guys that like really doesn't want to be spoiled um so normally no um yeah. if there's a larger than normal like type of event like I wanted I wanted to know nothing about Infinity War and Endgame. I wanted yeah. to just kind of go in and and uh, for the most part, I- Infinity War because we were in Scotland when we saw it, so I I saw nothing oh. and I didn't have any social media at that time, so oh, nice. <laughs> I had zero spoilers going into uh, to Infinity War. And then uh, Endgame, some little punk ass prick spoiled the uh, the cap. Uh, handing his shield over to Sam Wilson. Uh, uh-huh. uh, like me to work, he was like walking uh-huh. in and he's like, Oh my god, Sam Wilson's the new Captain America. What do you think? It's and it like Endgame had been out for like three hours. Oh wow, <laughs> it was like Crazy. you prick. <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> I think for larger like movie events, yeah, I, I really don't want any spoilers, but for the most part, I, I, I'm fine if I do have them, yeah, like I. I'm the same way. Like, if it's a big movie or like TV event, like I remember, like when when Breaking Bad came out, I had to do everything in my my power not to be spoiled by like like everyone. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm watching that thing, <laughs> or or like, I remember that like like when when Endgame came out, I, I was coming out of a movie theater, but I can't remember what I had seen. I'd seen something else. I didn't see Endgame yet because because I like it was like opening a weekend. I think I had tickets for the next day, and I heard some people talking about it in in the parking lot. I just covered my 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 ears, I'm like, nope, nope, nope. They like, just started saying it really loud. They just ran across the parking lot. And like, they're probably like, like, like okay, but like, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but, um, let's see. Uh, if you could relive any moment from your past, what would it be and why? Ooh. Um, <laughs> so, I know this is corny and cliche, but uh, <laughs> I, I definitely would want to go back and uh relive my my wedding day um we uh they tell you that when you get like everyone tells you you know when you get married it's gonna go so fast you know and i'm like yeah okay and then i look back and it's like holy like the day was over in what seemed like minutes um because everything did seem to like go by so quickly and uh we had a very uh eccentric photographer who wanted to get these like amazing shots and it was like you know i could have done without like if, if i could go back and just not have 
like spent so much time focusing on these photos and just like enjoyed the like party that was like our marriage. I, I, I like absolutely would love to be able to go back and revisit that. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Like when I got married, I didn't realize like my my ex wife. So she suffered from from a static nerve pain, and I guess right mm-hmm. after we we got married at the reception, she she would let. Like kind of having like a mini kind of episode, she was in a, a lot of pain. Like she kept coming up to him, to me and like like trying to subtly say it. I can tell she didn't want to ruin everything because we had all this family in from out of town. We were mm. we're trying to to just have fun and, and enjoy ourselves. But but like uh, she kept coming up to me and saying, "Jordan, I think we need to go. I think we need to go." To the point where like by the time we actually left for our um, hotel room for the night, she was just like kind of upset with me that i didn't catch the hint that she was in like so much oh, no. would have clued into that so and a little more so because a happy mm. wife would have been been more, more important on that day so yeah <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but um let's see um so i have to ask have you and your wife ever thought about having kids or like were you ever open to that or um I- the conversation came up several times like early on um and i think we always said okay you know we'll wait a little bit after we first get married and um <clears throat> see how we feel about it and i've kind of always known i didn't want children um and i'm not judgmental to those that have them uh it's right. <laughs> everyone walks their own beat um but uh i uh, I knew I didn't, but I, you know, if my wife wanted to have them, you know, I, I think we would probably have settled for maybe one. Yeah. Um, however, uh, I don't know, maybe about five to six years ago, we like revisited that conversation and said, you know, hey, what, what's your thoughts on kids? And I we both kind of had the exact same answer like we we have a very like fun life we you know uh don't necessarily feel the need to be able to have children um we want to continue with our adventures and uh (laughs) not saying that people with kids are tied down and you know again i'm not like casting any type of judgment towards anyone who does have kids but uh it just for us it just made sense we just didn't want to uh, the Haas name will continue. I've got three nephews. Uh, <laughs> so the future of the Haas uh, family will be secured in them. Uh, and then there's two nieces that will carry on as well. So, yeah, we're, uh, the Haas family legacy is protected, and I don't need nice. to invest into that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, as far as us ourselves, like it just no, it just wasn't going to be for us. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'd be in the same boat as me. Gonna be the fun uncle, maybe hang out with the nieces and nephews, have fun, and then when when they get a little tired or like cranky, you can hand them back off to the parents. So here you go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And also too much uh and all my um siblings, I uh, there's five of us all together that my uh, I only have one uh, brother that has kids and and uh my sister in law is getting ready to have her her fifth child now in in february so uh but but they're also the ones that 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 make the most money and they they love to travel and so it's like they're always having to figure out like what to do with the kids we bring them with us this time we have them stay somewhere what are we going to do that i can kind of see the 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 struggle and like sometimes they'll come stay with us sometimes they go somewhere else it's just kind of interesting to kind of see that yeah (laughs) so but uh, but let's see, we're kind of winding down a, a little bit. But let's see. And I'm getting a little picky at trying to to choose. Um, what do you? Th- uh, what is the best gift you've ever re- received? Do you have anything that maybe comes to mind? Um, who? Or a couple, you could say. Yeah, I've my <laughs> wife is is pretty awesome when it comes to to gift giving um <laughs> a couple of years ago she gave me the nick offerman uh edition lagavulin oh, um, nice. <laughs> which at at that time was not being sold in the states so she had to buy it oh. like she actually had to pay in euros uh oh, to wow. get it and then yeah uh 
have it shipped to the states, and that was pretty cool when I got that. Um, I still haven't actually opened it. It's still oh man. <laughs> I I have this habit of collecting alcohol, um, but yeah. not <laughs> drinking it. So when like the time comes for me to have a drink, I'll just drink like cheap shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, like all the like this whole cabinet behind me here is just like filled with bottles of alcohol. Um, let's see. She gave me a map. Um, I'm looking at it right now, actually. Uh, she gave me a map um, of the world where we put pins on everywhere we want to go, and we put pins on everywhere we have gone. Oh, nice. um, yeah, yeah, so it's it's kind of a porcupine a bit of a map. She gave me a globe <laughs> bar. Uh, that's the coolest. That's where my uh, my Offerman edition Lagavulin is in. Is I have a, oh, a nice. globe bar. So you can open it up and there's the bottle in there. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, those are, <laughs> I hate that half of those are alcohol related, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine because, like, I'm not even a, a, <coughs> a, a drinker. I think it'd be, it'd be awesome to have the Nick Offerman, Offerman and Lagavulin because, like, like Nick Offerman and uh, more specifically Ron Swanson, like, if there's any, like, like more, more cooler character on like on like TV like like he's one of my like all time favorites because he's like the manliest man out there you know so, yeah so yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> at the Lagavulin factory he's he's now like a uh, uh, a shareholder so he's he's a partial owner um, oh, and nice. <laughs> uh, when we had gone and done the tour the tour guide said that he shows up several times a year spontaneously. Um, and he'll give tours awesome. of the Lagavulin factory as Ron Swanson. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That'd be so amazing. Like, can oh, you imagine man. if you just walked in <laughs> yeah. to like the Lager Balloon factory and there's Ron Swanson oh, who's oh, going to give yeah. you a tour? Yeah. Oh, man, that'd be like a like bucket list thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. I'm trying to find, find one more. So, here, let's go with it. With sports to wind it down. Like, like so so what are you what are your favorite sports teams like like maybe like football basketball which sports do you follow i mean what baseball i that? kind of really only follow the nfl and um uh, and uh the major league baseball um okay for a little while there i was i was watching and was invested in in soccer and then it was rugby for a little bit and it was always kind of the flavor like uh when I'd gone to New Zealand, that kind of struck up like a love. Oh, for the All Blacks. And so I started watching, oh, you nice. know, <laughs> and following yeah. rugby. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, the constant throughout my life has been uh, baseball. And, uh, again, I, I mentioned earlier I was born in Orange County, California, specifically Anaheim. And that is where Angel Stadium is located. So mm, I'm nice. a Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim fan. Um, nice. yeah. Yeah, they really need to just go back to like the California Angels. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was. And then Disney bought them, and it was the Anaheim Angels. And then yeah, uh, it's it, like it, they're all over the place. <laughs> they really are. Uh, so yeah, sadly, my Angels are terrible. But uh, at least I have like two like of the best players in the major leagues. Uh, yeah, they got Mike Trout. Like he's one of my favorite of any baseball players. So. Shohei yeah. Otani, baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, the uh, Angels fans, and then yeah, they, I've been an NFL fan. Um, and I root for the Rams. Uh, nice. We had a great season last year, but oh, we're yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're paying for the Super Bowl uh, this year. <laughs> we're doing awful, awful, awful. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's nice to have them back in town. I when they left, uh, I went through kind of a weird little rebellious phase where I wasn't going to root for them when they left California the first time and went to St. Louis um so i like randomly was like okay because they left and betrayed me i'm going to root for the tampa bay buccaneers <laughs> so for a while there i was a bucks fan and yeah uh, <laughs> when it was rumored that the rams were going to be coming back to la my dad called me and was like hey if they come back he's like you're you're gonna be a rams fan again right and my dad has been true my brother has been true to the rams their whole lives um so they were they like both were made it a point to like Hey, if they come back, you'll forgive them, right? And you'll come back to the fold. And I'm like, yeah, I'll <laughs> yeah. be a Rams fan. So, um, but it, as it works with the NFL, I mean, especially when you if you play fantasy football, I mean, you find yourself rooting more now for players than you you do for teams. Um, and so, like, 
I play in, I think, four different fantasy football leagues right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so I like find myself like less inclined to watch football and more inclined to like watch the players. So oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's interesting what fantasy does to you. It makes you hate the game of football. Yeah, my my dad's on a few uh, fantasy teams. So when we watch a bit, like throw it to number nine. I got that guy on my fantasy team. Throw to him. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, he's like rooting for the player. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, so I'm gonna end with the the question that I end all of these interviews with, uh, just a simple one. So, pineapple, does it belong on on pizza? Yes or no? <laughs> um, I I will eat pizza um, with pineapple. Yeah, I, not in huge moderations, but I think one or two slices with with uh pepperoni on them is fine like yeah. I, you know if i'm starving that's not the first pizza topping that's going to come to <laughs> mind but yeah i'll say yes well that's good because pineapple is like one of my favorite what's well, my favorite fruit and also one like one of my favorite foods in in uh, general so i'll put pineapple on like like damn near everything but but like i feel like it it's kind of like like the people who who Hey, pineapple on, on that pizza. A lot of those kind of pizza snobs, like they're from New York or from places where pizza's big. They're like, absolutely not. No, like it doesn't mm. belong. But, but to each their own, you know. So, so yeah, like I'm a big pineapple fan. I'll put it on everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> but pineapple yeah. and black olives. That's Deadpool's suggestion for the best pizza topping. Oh yeah, <laughs> which, which I don't know about the combination, <laughs> but, then, but separately I like them both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. But yeah, I think that'll do it. We've we've hit the two hour mark, so I think that'll that'll we'll we'll call the wrap there. So that was a lot of fun, though. Maybe someday we'll we'll do part two because we only got to about the half of these questions. So, so <laughs> okay, uh, down the road, maybe a year from now or something like that, we'll think about it. But but sure. yeah, but thanks for doing this, though. Yeah, oh, no, no, thank excited. you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So. I'm excited to bring this back. So if there's anybody watching, anybody from the community that that and they want to come on and and you want to be featured on an episode of One V Two Hundred, do a deep dive into your life. We'll we'll uh, do it for you whenever you want. Just hit me up. Let me know. So so yeah, but but I think that so uh, we'll we'll just do a couple of plugs. If you have anything that that you want to plug, Moose, or uh, tell us where we can find you. Uh, so it's at Big Moose Haas on Twitter. Um, and then, you know, I, I'll do the, the shameless plug for Benny and the Moose, Save America. Um, <laughs> we, we're we filming our first uh, set of matches this week, actually. Um, and we've got some fun stuff coming out. So uh, our goal is to not replace the movie trivia showdown. Our goal <laughs> is to just offer us trivia nerds an opportunity to play some more um yeah <laughs> so uh that's gonna start coming out in the first week of january um so we're filming our first matches we're gonna be editing them then we're gonna be dropping them so we'll start putting on some promotional stuff in december keep your eye out for that uh and then yeah we would absolutely love uh once we've got our ducks in a row for people to be able to come and follow us uh either on twitter or follow our network on youtube which will be the last american heroes uh, network. Nice. Um, nice. As you can tell, Benny does a lot of the naming for us. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, it. it's it's <laughs> going to be a fun way of doing movie trivia. We have prohibition trivia and we have drunk trivia. Um, and nice. we are <laughs> very excited to get the Movie Hero Network uh, their first yes. match in January. We're looking forward to it. And also, Benny has already been doing some some trash talking about, about maybe facing me in a the National Lampoon's uh trivia contest so so yeah oh, I'm definitely okay i will I'm, put that together I'm for that yeah 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 so okay. yeah i'm definitely down for that because i could uh, like like do like quote those movies from beginning to end so yeah <laughs> perfect oh my gosh that would be a lot of fun excellent okay i'll yeah. i'm definitely writing that match because he can't be part of it but yeah right <laughs> that'd be yeah, a and, lot of fun and you want to make it like just me and him or you want to make it include some other people that want to want to join in i'm up for whatever so <laughs> we might have to start with the feud and then yeah, right. <laughs> after after round one we need to add the next batch in. yep yep yeah, yeah exactly <laughs>
I definitely think at some point next year I'm going to, we're definitely going to put together um, an MCU Iron Man competition. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe get like 20, 25 potential players and just go through, uh, you know, free for all style where, hey, at the end of, at the end of, these five questions, whoever has the lowest point, you're out. Next person come in, just keep it Who's going. Who's still standing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's still nice. standing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Count me in for that. Like, I'd, I'd definitely do that. So, you got so, it. Yeah, but, yeah. So, but, but yeah. And then, as far as the movie network or the, uh, the movie hero network goes, uh, you can find us on the social medias at movie hero2121 on, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we, we also run the, the Schmodown Friends and Family Group over on Facebook. So we're still trying to keep keep the legacy of the Schmodown alive. And if you have have any projects that that you're you're working on, like any if you have a YouTube channel, you can post over there to your heart's content. So so if you have matches coming up, you can 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 post over in, in that group, Moose, and we'll we'll uh, promote it for you. We'll we'll tell everyone to 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 tune in, subscribe, all that stuff. So so yeah, we'll definitely do that for you and then uh we've got a couple episodes coming up this week we got uh we're doing brian nussbaum's uh top one 128 championship that's going to be tuesday night and we also have uh richie uh goodaker's uh i believe it this is part two on friday and then in between i'm going to try and get some more snack heroes out you can watch the, the little promo that i put out on our our uh, channel I did a little promo where I laid out all the snacks that I have in my kitchen and a damn near filled up the entire uh, um, countertop of, with all the crazy snacks. But I always tell everyone everything in moderation. I'm not going to sit here and like eat all those snacks and eat a little <laughs> bit and I'm going to pass it off to someone else who wants the rest of it or something like that. But it's fun to just kind of try them out. So, so that show just kind of sporadic whenever I, I have some extra time. So, so I'm hoping to maybe get one out either tomorrow or Thursday. We'll, we'll kind of see how it goes because I've been without a phone also for the next or the last few days. And, and I work remotely. So without a phone, I'm not able to go to work because there's certain things I got to take pictures of certain things that I got to do in the moment. And they send all my information to an app on my phone. So it's, so it's so kind of, like I'm going to be catching up on some work for sure. So, so we'll see that, uh, when I can make some time for that. So, Definitely something this week, though. That's why you want to subscribe. And you want to hit the little bell notification so you'll know exactly when these episodes drop. You'll get notified. So, but, but yeah. Thanks again, Moose, for uh, joining me for the little interview. It's fun getting to know you a little more, doing a little deep dive. You know, so yeah. Well, and and we're definitely gonna be doing more of these. Maybe. Uh, Benny, he's in the the chat. Maybe we'll dive into him. Maybe so. Let's you know, go, Benny. Of, yeah, he's one of the ones on my radar. So, so, but, but, anyways, yeah, that'll do it. So, uh, uh, for uh, Moose Haas, I've been Jordan, the movie hero Anderson, and we will see you next time.